This is Next Radio. With Broadcast Bionics. Innovative solutions for creative people. Hi there, good morning everybody. It's great to see so many of you here today. Thanks to Matt and to James for the invitation. Um, and what a remarkable place this is, the uh, Royal Institution. I failed science in a, in a more than spectacular way. So this is a floor I never expected to be standing on. Now, 40 years ago, this city, London, was a very different place from the remarkable centre of the world it has now become. But that was about to change. Because LBC, Britain's first independent legal commercial radio station, was about to burst into life. This is London Broadcasting, the news and information voice of independent radio. Welcome to LBC at 6 o'clock, October the 8th. It's over. The four gunmen have come out. The uh, siege here has just ended one minute ago. Quick! Come to me! There have just been three explosions which have ripped through the embassy building. Smoke is wafting over the roofs now, and there are gunmen, and there are policemen on the balcony. This is LBC, where news comes first. Margaret Thatcher is our guest this morning on LBC, and you can phone her on this number, 353-8111. Um, do you think it is at all possible that we could have um, an election in 1976? I think it's possible, and I think it's something we would be prepared for. A plane, a jet plane, it sounded like, flew over the apartment building that we live in. It sounded very low. It was followed immediately after by a very, very loud explosion. The city had a new voice. In Britain, LBC pioneered things like the radio phone-in. It introduced rolling news coverage to the UK. As you heard there, prime ministers, police commissioners, the people in power were held to account. And for the first time the BBC had some competition, but it hasn't been the easiest of journeys. At one point, LBC almost completely disappeared from the dial. There was a sort of sense that it had lost its edge. LBC had always focused on current affairs, but the claim was that LBC was just for the angry cabbies, and uh, the type of questions that uh, the audience would be asked would be, what's your favorite biscuit? Um, listeners hadn't abandoned LBC, but at Global, we certainly wanted more to step by. And right now, we are enjoying some extraordinary moments in our four decades. We have record-breaking audience figures, programmes that are genuinely making history, and all of that is helping to fuel a growing business. So what have we done? Well, essentially, we have gone back to the core. Um, we wanted to give LBC a very rigorous self-examination, and the first thing to do was to give it a clear identity. When people tune in, what are they going to get? We didn't just want to reflect the news agenda, we also wanted to set the news agenda. And uh, I remember also when I got uh, that call from Richard Park, there was no ambiguity in the mission, and that was for LBC to be a real force of consequence in the UK and at the centre of debate. So, right now, centre stage of LBC's turbocharged offering is great talent. As we know, great talent makes it all sound easy. Presenters who know what their audience are thinking and are talking about. And our presenters are people who will pick an issue and they will throw it against the wall. And unlike at the BBC, they can be as opinionated as they like. So you can see there, we have uh, Nick Ferrari, who is our triple espresso. He's the guy who every morning will ignite a story. James O'Brien comes on at 10 o'clock, and he tries to blow it out. But these presenters are very comfortable at opening up, uh, letting the wall down on their own lives. So, they can talk about being adopted. They will say that they had a miscarriage. They will reveal that they were in trouble when they were younger. But what they're not is vanilla. They're not bland. Our presenters need to cut through, and they need to get attention. Now, lots of stations talk about listening to their audience. At LBC, we really do, because 
the role of listeners is massively upgraded. They are our hit records, often shaping and delivering our output. You'll be aware of this growing brigade of so-called experts, self-appointed talking heads. But it's our callers who are the experts at LBC, and often they have much more interesting stories. Who says a, a teacher doesn't know as much as the education secretary? And because of this relationship that our listeners have with the presenters, often they're prepared to share the most intimate of stories. They'll talk about stuff that they've never talked to anybody else about. They don't know James O'Brien, but they think they do. And for them, LBC is a safe place to talk. John's in Hornchurch. John, what's on your mind? Um, very similar to the last uh, email we just got. I'm uh, 59 years old. Um, when I was 12 years old, I was abused by a priest. I haven't told anybody. Ever? You're Never. You're the first person I've ever told. The guilt is still there that it's hard to explain that you're, you know it's wrong now. But I've kept this to myself for 50 years, well, 45 years. Yeah. I've not told my wife, I've not told anybody. You're the first person I've ever that type of radio sort of hypnotic. It's very difficult to turn off. So at LBC, presenters with an opinion and the audience who are much more than the supporting cast. And then we needed a killer idea. We needed something to be famous for. Breaking news and the Deputy Prime Minister is currently taking part in his first ever weekly radio show. I cannot now say that I want to represent the Lib Dems. Yes, Dem. he knows he will get some abuse. At the same time, it does give him half an hour to really push things that he feels uh, that they've succeeded on. I'm just wondering why the Coalition is discriminating against mothers like me. Laura, I, do, I can hear your, I can hear <laughs> one of your children in the background, by the way. Yes, I know. You probably but, think what I do is a, is a worthless job. No, 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 no. Absolutely this not. This is what LBC does so well is taking people in and putting them to task. I don't think you know. What is it that I don't know? You just don't know. You, you, you go with the wind. <laughs> what I know I've got to do... No, 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 no just tell me I'm wrong with that. We move on. <laughs> no, because it's a trap question. You, no, it's not. It's a ludicrous trap question. You, you, know, you sit there, you, you, come on. I think everybody's had enough of this. Oh, How much would oh. it cost you to travel one way, Angel, to London Bridge? God. Um... But who's drawn up this? This, loose, this useless chart. If Nigel Farage is either, either listening or looking, should we be in the European Union or do we do what UKIP want, which is to pull ourselves out of the European Union? Let's have the debate out in the open. When the Deputy Prime Minister says he wants to go public, I have absolutely no choice because we need to have a national debate on what I think is the most important issue this country has faced for hundreds of years. I, I, I don't want to get into some sort of endless ding-dong with poor old Cleggers. He's there to fulfil a very important ceremonial function as David Cameron's lapdog. I hear the figures have gone up. They're calling it the Clegg effect. I doubt that very, very well, much. I mean, <laughs> imagine if we could do it with a politician who was popular. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Nick Clegg and Boris Johnson, two men who have helped give LBC's profile an extraordinary lift. For the Deputy Prime Minister, this was the first time that a senior member of government had agreed to be questioned week after week, live on air, with such regularity. Boris Johnson uh, joined him, and in Call Clegg and Ask Boris, we now have programmes that give and give headline after headline. Now, they don't get to see the questions, and they certainly aren't given a free ride. Every word is scrutinised as our listeners try to expose every pound spent and every promise made. Westminster initially rolled its eyes, uh, but right now we've even managed to get the lobby. We've forced the lobby to move their transistor radios across from the Today programme to LBC, and even they admit being a little bit disappointed when the Deputy Prime Minister has an occasional day off. Benedict Brogan in The Telegraph put it in his blog, LBC is becoming the fashionable centre of power. Now, right now, Clegg and Boris aren't the only ones. They're not alone. More and more high-profile people are joining LBC. The head of the Met, the Archbishop of Canterbury, has done a phone-in, the man in charge of school inspections, and also... Um, 
one of the policy makers at the Bank of England. As uh, Boris helpfully put it, LBC is becoming the cockpit of the nation. Now, these guys know there's a risk. They know they could be skewered. This is an interview between the leader of UKIP, Nigel Farage, and our presenter, James O'Brien. Uh, it was described by many as a car crash. Um, and it ended with UKIP's director of communications trying to bring the exchange to a halt. So why do they do it? Well, our listeners are their voters, and LBC provides a very unique platform for both to connect. Now, there's no question, this style of programming has, has helped LBC shout louder. Um, but it's not every day you get accused of firing the pistol gun for the general election. Uh, let me take you to a Wednesday evening back in March at a hotel not too far away from here when LBC genuinely made history. Please welcome Nick Clegg and Nigel Farage. The fact is, well, let me if we're members of the European Union, we have the complete free flow of people. Are you denying that? Uh, yes, it is not unqualified. You, you are denying it is, it that. It is not the case that anyone can move to this country and simply claim benefits, simply Didn't live mention here. benefits. Let me, let me, let I me, didn't mention... You let keep me, doing benefits. No. Yeah, this was the great showdown between Nick Clegg and Nigel Farage on Britain's future in Europe. This was historic stuff. It had ha not happened for many, many years, and it happened because of LBC. Nick Clegg threw down the challenge live on air, and Nigel Farage accepted it on his program on LBC. And we thought, fantastic, it's in the bag. We've got a debate on our hands at sort of the lecterns. Uh, but not only did we need to bring two political parties together with two very different views on life, um, all of the major TV players then charged in and they wanted to host it. In the end, there were two debates, one on primetime BBC television with David Dimbleby, the other on LBC with Nick Ferrari, our breakfast host. But ours, critically, very importantly, was first. And this wasn't just a radio debate. It was a TV debate produced by our colleagues at Global Television, and we made it available to all other broadcasters. Now, opinions vary on who actually won that, uh, but for us, LBC was uh, emblazoned across the news channels who took it live. It was the top story on the 10 o'clock news programs, splashed across the front pages, and the hashtag LBC debate trended uh, four times worldwide. So, where are we heading next? Well, when I got the job at LBC, so many people said, why can't I hear it across the country? Why is it not national? Well, now it is, and this is a great opportunity for us because on DAB Digital Radio, we are leading Britain's conversation. And, um, and my view is there is uh, a gap in the market. You take the BBC's speech stations who produce some fantastic content, but outside of Morning and Drive on Radio 4, um, they're locked into the documentaries, the expensive documentaries, the built programs. And LBC doesn't do the poetry slots, it doesn't have people reading books. Five Live, increasingly sports-driven, and again, LBC isn't a place where we would interrupt anyone for a wicket in the cricket. We can always also be uh, quicker to the story. There's no anguished editorial meetings. We can change direction as simple as that. And that's because we have a very short chain of command. In London, with presenters and producers, we have a team of around 30 in total. So there are fewer issues that can get in the way. The BBC's decision to move Five Live to Salford also offers us a, a chance. Uh, and I say this as a very proud uh, Northerner, most people involved in the cut and thrust of politics and news are here in London. Now, of course, we will have to find that right balance. We've spent 40 years in this city, but I don't think we've ever been parochial at LBC. We've never been radio local, and a lot of what we were already do had national relevance. When Harvey Nichols opened its store in Leeds, it didn't mean that the London store would be any less great. The BBC can draw on its army of journalists, and the full frontal attack is that the 
commercial radio just doesn't do news. Well, that is something that I would reject. Uh, news and information are very important ingredients in what we do in commercial radio. It reaffirms our local credentials and that helps build loyalty. And right now, at Global, we are building up a team right across the UK of about 100 journalists, uh, many of them outside of London, working on our regional capital and heart stations. And they are now the pulse of the LBC news gathering operation. OK, so we're leading on Rotherham. Report out later, 1,400 children sexually exploited in the town. Obviously going to be the big story of the day. We make sure that we get to the heart of the story as fast as possible, taking our listeners there, not just on the airwaves, but also online and in as much detail as we can possibly do, breaking news via Twitter, on the airwaves, and also via our website. Hi, Tom, it's Christian. Yeah, we're going to need you in one minute. I'm ready. I'm down the tie line. LBC reporter Tom Swarbrick is at New Scotland Yard. Tom, what's the latest? Nick, this report will detail how 1,400 children are suspected of being abused in Rotherham over a 16-year period. So as well as doing these lives for LBC and reporting into the news, which is the backbone of what we do, is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm also creating bespoke content for our other stations. Capital's Tom Swarbrick at Scotland Yard. I want our journalists to be hungry for stories and really give competitors a run for their money. But times have changed and technology has changed and no longer do people just come for news and information at the top of the hour. We can't just sit and wait for them to show up, we need to go to them. People who were in positions of authority could have protected these children didn't. They should now take responsibility for having failed to do so. So Sean Wright should go? Yes. Uh, that's obviously going to be our top line now on LBC and I'm also going to send it to our regional news centres and we can use our own internal wire service, G News, to get that out to them. Some people think that um, commercial radio doesn't do news, but in the last 18 months we've interviewed the family of Lee Rigby's killer. We've been to Romania to see locals get on buses there to come to the UK. And we've also made documentaries about slavery, modern day slavery in this country. And that has meant that we have won some of the UK's biggest awards in the industry, not only in this country, but also internationally. So there you go, uh, reinvigorated LBC, backed by Global's newsrooms across the UK, and that is a powerful combination. Um, we had to go beyond the status quo, but we have a brilliant team, and every day they are hungry for success. Uh, they are fixed on creating content that makes us stand out. The ambition is always to be first, to really set the agenda. As I said, we're not Five Live, we're not Radio 4, we're very proud, actually, to be LBC and we should be doing everything, every single day, to differentiate ourselves from the competition. In the same way that The Guardian is no longer just a newspaper, we can't just be fixed on what is coming out of the speakers. We need to innovate digitally. And the one thing that is constant is change. Things were different five years ago and there's no question they'll be different in another five years, but at LBC, we want to keep reinvigorating, reinventing, and I think that's especially important at a time when we are winning. But there'll always be people, and there'll always be stories, which is why I think Speech Radio and LBC will grow and grow. Over and out. Thank you very much. James Rear, everybody. This is Next Radio was broadcast by Onyx. Innovative solutions for creative people.